Welcome to another episode of the Everyman Show. That would be me being the type of person that I would want to punch in the face. If you hear my voice, touch me on my shoulder. Like I never friggin' left. You flew her to me. Y'all wanna see a human ape out? This, this episode just got started. Welcome everybody to another exciting episode of the Everyman Show. I am John Everyman, and I sound loud and echoey, bro. If you can hear me in these headphones, it sounds crazy. Hold on, hold on a second. There we go. All right, I sound maybe a little better, guys. We are in Atlanta, the ATL. Yes, that's right. Everyman Podcast Show. We are still traveling this country finding people we love our city down in miami but we need to go further and ironically this next guest isn't really taking us far with atlanta <laughs> i just found this out a second ago <laughs> um and i got and i got now mateo in here yeah mateo my man i'm free in the nipple you freeing the nipple? No, no, don't do that, man. After all these years, you can't be doing shit like that. Nah, my, my dog been locked up too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you got messages like free Nipsey? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I just bought these um these presidentes. Yeah. And the lady was like Saturday party, and I said depression. <laughs> That sounds more up the alley. Mattel, can you believe we actually got a sponsor, man? We got a real fucking sponsor this year. Uh, nah, I'm going to miss making up fake sponsors. Yeah, I know, but we can't do that no more. We need to pay the bills. Does that the devalue the real sponsors? Uh, 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 yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I feel like it makes the real sponsors, like, they don't know it's fake. It makes them look better. better. Right. Like, um, you need to get those other sponsors out. But guys, again, man, it, we're excited. We're back. We're doing these interviews in Atlanta, like I said. Um, I love it. And just like that, we do have a guest from the Atlanta area, sort of the Atlanta area. Just watered that down for me real fast. But we got a comedian, because that's right. In Atlanta, they got comedians, too. If you didn't know that, it's a real thing. Atlanta's not just filled with Ludacris and T.I. people. Well, T.I. is a comedian, too. He is? I actually think Ludo would be better at comedy than T.I., but that's that's another thing. You think thing. so? You know, I think the funniest rapper in the world is 50 Cent. I think he's the best comedic rapper I've ever ran into in my life. I mean, Soup Dogg looks like... Yeah, Kanye. Kanye crazy. I, I want to see Kanye just rant. Speaking of watered down, bro, your forehead right now looking it, real. It is. Listen, so every time, <laughs> watered down. Every time I do, like, yeah, no, I, I got, I got to reflect the beers. But um, every time I do this shit, man, I like, I, I go into the sweats. It's I the get lights. the sweats. I, it's not the lights. It's, not it's, it's the no, pressure, bro. It's the pressure. It's just exactly. knowing you got to be every man, bro. It's, it's, it's you. Depression. <laughs> but guys, like I said, we got a comedian here. My man, his name is Caesar. Caesar Pichardo. Caesar Pichardo. My man talks about your full government on it, baby. So that's because that's the actor name. That's the IMDb, bro. You ain't do your homework. Oh, no, no. I never do homework. <laughs> <laughs> the homework is here. How long you been out here in Atlanta? Yeah. I'm, I'm from Miami. Uh, I've been living in Atlanta for one year. From one year already? Right? One year. I moved here last year for the So you're rookie. So you're, you're you're in your rookie year of being in, in Atlanta. I, I am. If, I love yeah. this. I love this. This is perfect, man. This is better than what I was assuming. So your first year here, man, you said you're originally from Miami. Miami. Well, you said, uh, what was it now? Little Haiti. So I grew up in Wynwood, and then and eventually I moved to uh, Little Haiti. Okay. Is that... You, you went to Jackson, you went to Edison. Uh, no, I didn't go to those high schools. Uh, I went to this school called Turner Tech. Oh, I know oh, Turner Tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Central. yeah. You, you did the whole vocational shit. You know, high Tech. I went, to, I went to middle school in Winwood. I went to Jose de Diego, JD. Mm-hmm. And it was really bad. And then I remember like somebody from Turner Tech came to get a speech or whatever. And all I heard was they have a TV production program. And I just applied to that today. I didn't think I was going to get it. And then I was already getting ready to go to Booker T. And I'm like, oh, they got baseball, they got football, whatever, whatever. And it was bad, but then, like, in the summer, I got to accept this letter. 
And I showed it to my dad. He said, I have to go there. I'm just crying. No, man. That's every dad's. Oh, you're just, I have a real he's opportunity like, to like make like, something of myself. Exactly. He's like, you can, you can get a scholarship, get good grades. I'm like, baseball. They don't got sports. Baseball. <laughs> Whatever, but yeah, you know, all my friends end up getting shot, so I'm fine. Okay, there you go. <laughs> the long short of that story in Miami. But you, you came to Atlanta. What 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 made you want to move up here to Atlanta? Uh, see, so I'm, I'm an actor. Okay. And uh, I was getting a lot of like commercial opportunities in Miami. Like, uh, more more uh, narrative stuff, like TV shows and movies and stuff like that. And uh, it was between obviously Atlanta and New York uh, and LA. Okay. And Atlanta was a cheaper option. So you came to Atlanta more for acting reasons. Mm -hmm. What was your impression coming here to Atlanta? Or what's uh, been your impression of it? Like the scene or just the city? The city itself and I guess the scene because the scene is the city. So like when I was living in Miami, I actually, uh, I booked a few stuff in Atlanta and I would come out here and then I would stay at friends' houses or I would stay in studios. And I'm like, man, Atlanta's boring as shit. Because like, everything's like far from each other. And I'm, I live in Miami and I live in Little Haiti, just a bridge away. I'm in the beach. Then downtown, you got Kendall's not that far. Yeah, everything is almost like 15. Uh, exactly. So then here, I'm living, I'm, I'm staying, I don't know, like, now I know the places, but back then, I don't, I don't know what they were. It could have been Decatur, it could have been Smyrna, it could have been Sandy Springs. I was like, man, it's boring as hell. But then when I came to live here and I saw that it was more chill, like, at least where my life here has been more relaxed and chill. Then Miami, I've, I've grown to like it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, when people leave, it's either one or two situations happen. It's either they really love it and they stay where they're at and don't come back to Miami for shit, mm -hmm. or they come, they're here for uh, about a year. I, I compare say, everything to Miami, bro. Yeah, yeah. But I like Atlanta's real tranquil. But at the same time, it's a fuck around and find out type of city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would believe that. I mean, it, it, it's. Maybe it's a little more here in Atlanta, but like I said, I grew up in Wynwood and Little Haiti. Wynwood before it was Wynwood. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go for a walk, you're in overtime, you're going to fuck around and find out. Yeah. In my high school, in my middle school, JDD, it was like that. My, I think it was you. You told the joke about beating up white boys at, at school. Oh, yeah. yeah cracker I, Day. I, I, a cracker Day. I don't know what high school, you, what middle school or high school you went to, but my best friend, Eddie, he went to, I forgot what, he went to Charles R. Drew or something like that. And he said that, yeah, there was a cracker day where they would just beat up white looking kids. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've he's never, black, so obviously he Bro, didn't. for me, like, I never felt white, but then it's cracker day and I, I, I'm just in there yeah, fucking calculating, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm darker than you and I was still never black in my middle school. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm a cracker. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, I remember it would be like, like somebody, like another Latino wants to start a fight with me. we fighting. And then we get jumped by all the black kids from Overtown. So we went from enemies to like teammates trying to back to back. Ourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you know it, it's chill versus compared to Miami, it's a very chill city. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things you find weird, or you found weird, or had to get used to being up here in Atlanta? Oh man, um, weird. I don't know. We I'm Puerto Rican everywhere I go here. Okay. And I, you know, so, at least you're not Mexican. Like, <laughs> if you was in Texas, you'd probably be Mexican. I'll probably be Mexican. You know, sometimes they think I'm Middle Eastern here. Okay. Um, I can see it. But weird, I don't know, the roads, man. All the roads are fucked up. Potholes everywhere. I rarely take the highway, so I'm just, I'm, I'm local. Yeah. I take everything local and... You know, sometimes I'll see, like, if I drift a little bit to the right, I'm falling off a cliff. Like, that's new to me, you know what I mean? Because in Miami, Fuck, we, don't, here, bro. we got none of that. There's no hills, yeah. Yeah, Miami, hey, over here, is everything's a hill. Uh, what else, what else I, don't, I don't know what else would be weird. I mean, it's hard to find good Latin food. Like like he was saying, you just had yeah, this is white people like, Cuban food. Yeah, you either going to get, like, white American or black American food. Yeah, yeah. And they both love barbecue, so it's just a lot of barbecue, I'm yeah. assuming. You know what I mean? I haven't seen a barbecue place yet. I've seen like it is in Miami, all these. Uh, but what do you mean, like, like a like a barbecue? Oh, spot. you gotta go oh, gotta a little bit outside of downtown type shit. No, like, in Buckhead, there's a spot called Fat Mats. Fat Mats. Fat Mats or Fat Max? Hey, oh. Fat Max, man. I, American I people love putting time. fat. Oh, and on the name of the place, yeah, so man, you know what you're getting into. But delicious. I will say, never trust a skinny cook. So no, you for got sure. fat rain on it. I mean, it depends. You know, like, uh, it, most Japanese men are, are, are skinny and they're making some fire-ass sushi or something, something. Because it's sushi. It just got a roll. <laughs> you know you know put ingredients Yo, oh, oh. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, an I Italian wanna... or a Cuban or Puerto Rican, I need you to be a little... Yeah. You're born in Miami. Born in Miami. When's the first time you left the country? I mean, when I was like... 
three to five, uh, my mom would send me to Honduras all the time. But my mom was undocumented, so she would send me with strangers. Yeah. No. She would send me like, oh, la, la, la amiga de so-and-so's friend is going to go to Honduras to visit her family. I'm going to ask her to take them with you. And, then, and they'll pick you up, and your, my grandma, your grandma will pick you up at the airport. You cool with that? I was three or five. I had no say. You want to say nope? <laughs> like, no man, stranger. But dude, honestly, what type I, of mom are you? But I haven't been to Honduras since like four or five. But okay. Then, and then after that, I went to Dominican Republic when I was eight with my sister. And then after that, then I just traveled by myself. What the What's the dopest country you feel like you visited? I used to live in Australia. You used to live in Australia. I lived in Australia for two for years. For how long? For two years. Yeah, 2016 to 2018. What? What were you doing, bro? So since my mom is undocumented, I said I'm gonna do the same thing. I want to be a, a foreigner in another country, and then I, I went on Google and I typed in the most livable cities in the world. Six of them were Australian, three Canadians, and one was like in Sweden. And obviously, I chose the farthest one away, and I moved to Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, Melbourne. Bird. they pronounce Melbourne, but they pronounce yeah. yeah. So what's you gotta yeah. tell us what that's You're, like right now. I, I loved it there. If I wasn't pursuing acting, I probably would have stayed there and settled down. A lot of the actors there want to come to LA, obviously. Is there a lot of ca- kangaroos? There is a lot of kangaroos, yeah. There's a lot of wild shit, spiders, all that kind of I saw, it, I mean, I never felt like my life was in danger because of an animal. But uh, I did see, they have this, this uh, spider called the long leg spider. And it's like, the body of the spider is this big. But the legs are like this, like these cords right here. Jesus Christ! But and then you just see them in the corner of like a parking garage or something. Really? Yeah, yeah. But in kangaroos, like it'll, it'll be like you won't see kangaroos in Atlanta, like in Buckhead. <laughs> but you might see them in Smyrna. You know what I'm saying? Like away from kangaroos. The city. Yeah, yeah. Here? No, it's no. Like, and then, and, 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 oh, okay. no, I'll give like, you an example. Like, like okay. you, you, won't like see how... them, you won't see them in downtown Melbourne, but you'll see them. Like in the suburbs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You'll see foxes in, in Sweetwater and Kendall. They're not going to walk around Winwood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I did the one mistake of whistling to a fox. <laughs> <laughs> a woman? No, a woman. <laughs> that, that too. Well, that's was, a vixen. You know right? that, right? A no, what? A female fox is a vixen. Oh, really? Oh, that's where that phrase comes yeah. from? Yeah. But if they say she's a fox, it's funny because that's a male animal. Oh, yeah. No, she's yeah. a vixen. Yo, I ain't, I ain't like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she was a vixen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nah, man. So like, um, so you you chose Atlanta though. You this is home. You mm-hmm. ain't going nowhere. I mean, yeah. Like I I, I would like to settle down here because okay. I, I like the the uh, like the environment, the environment, and and just the life here. But uh, obviously, you know, if I book something in Los Angeles, and I might. You know, might but I, might, I might still settle here and then just leave to, to film and then come back. And stuff that might like make yeah, more yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Oh, but that's dope, man. So, so you feel like Atlanta's home of fish. So, yeah. so, man, let's talk about this, man. So, I, I introduced you as a comedian, but you tossed in actor. Uh, what came first, the acting or the comedy? The acting. The acting. Acting. Acting came first. Yeah? Yeah. So, what, what drove you to want to be an actor? So, um... So funny enough, like growing up, my, my parents were always kind of busy. Okay. And the only time we would get together, that everybody aside from dinner, even when dinner, the, the news would be on and no one's talking, we're just paying attention to the news. But then like w- when it's movie time, so I would I grew up watching a lot of John Claude Van Damme movies. Like he was like my, he was like my role model. Like I thought I had to look like John Claude Van Damme in order to like get girls and just be successful. <laughs> I need to be John Claude Van Damme, you know. This motherfucker outside doing roundhouse kicks, uh, man. I everything. I could never do the split. No. And I have, uh, you know, blood sports, Street Fighter, the Quest. I was like, I gotta do that. And then when I graduated elementary school, uh, I didn't know that when you get to middle school, you have periods. Right. You know, I know, because, you know, in elementary school, you have the same teacher the whole day. Exactly. And then I look at my schedule, and it said drama. I was like, what the fuck? This, this, this gay is drama. Like, I didn't mean it like that, but I was like, this gets fucked. But then I ended up in the class, and and then we were do, we did the Grinch as a play. The first play we did was The Sound of Music. Okay. And then That's a nice one. I, just, I just fell fell in love with the art. It, it yeah. called to you at that moment. Yeah, yeah. So once you did that in high school, you just kept pursuing it after that? Well, the, I, the sound of music, is that the Jews and the Nazis? Yes, yeah, exactly. Which, which one did you play? So I played one of the, so the main guy, uh, the dad. Oh, okay. right. I played his one of his sons. Yeah. So I guess I was a German. But That, that was very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I played a German 
child. Yeah. <laughs> that was Franklin. You but know there was someone in the crowd. Mazel tov. That skin tone's a little weird. <laughs> no, what do you mean? And, and, and then you got to remember that this, this isn't Jose de Diego, so the whole audience is just black, Puerto Rican, Nicaraguense, so they don't know what the fuck the sound of music is. They're just like, <laughs> now, a lot of my homeboys like, damn, Cesar's on stage. I knew he was gay. He's over here singing and shit, and I'm like, no, bro, this is art. While I'm going, do a deer, a female deer, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so it was, it, was, it was fun, but you know, obviously, you know, it, it was. But it called to you, like, yeah, that, it was, that, it was really, fun. That, that really drew you in. So then you said after that, what you? you so that was in? middle school, and then I, I, I told you that uh, somebody came, an advisor came to my middle school for turn tech, right. and then I applied for the TV production program, and they accepted me into the school, but they said the TV production program was full. So then they put me, they, they pick where they put you. Mm-hmm. And they put me in finance. And then I forgot all about acting for those four years. I was just, doing everything. you were thinking about accounting at that point. I was doing accounting. I was also playing baseball. Uh, they didn't have sports, but they let you play for homeschool. I ended up playing for Miami Central, which was right behind it. Oh, that's dope. And uh, so then I was just doing that, baseball. And, and, then, and then my first job was at AMC Movie Theaters in Sunset. Oh, shit. Sunset Theaters, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, that was cool. How I, many of your homies did you let sneak in the movie theater, yo? Whoever, I, I lost count. I lost count. What? <laughs> what? At sunset too? It, yeah. You, you're just walking with confidence. Nobody's saying nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Caesar's there. Come up. <laughs> Caesar's like he's got a special rope where he just lets out something. On his first day, yeah. he had like ten dudes right behind him. And, and that, that was like them. high school. You're working at the movies. Yeah, I was sixteen. It was, it was so funny because like, man, I just thought about it. like that should be illegal. That's like child. Child child nah, that's, yeah. that's an appropriate job for a teenager. Nah, though. man, I went from like six dollars and seventy nine cents as an usher, and then I remember I got promoted. Usher, usher. I got promoted to concession, and that was like six eighty nine. And then you get promoted to guest services, and that means you got a little desk and stuff right here, and people get to return their tickets, and that's what, that was like seven fifteen. Shit. And I was bro. like, man. And then, like, I remember, like, eventually you got to find, like, a side hustle. So yeah. people would, like, you know, return tickets and get the extra cash or, like, you find people's wallet or phones. Man, it, I'm so old that people will find Blackberries, them old school Palm Pilots and stuff, and they, they just go sell it at the Flea Market USA on 79th. Yeah. And that, there you go. That, that fixes your salary. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He made the adjustments mm-hmm. real fast. <laughs> he was walking around living it better than the manager of the movie. Yeah. They're like, what is Caesar doing that? He makes more money than me. Not, well, you that, sell more when you work at the movies, it's just, you're like 16, your manager only 19. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's stress it's the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they talk to you like they, they've been doing this for 10 years. I know? mean, that shit will break you down. <laughs> you know, because like, I've been in the movies when, when people are smashing in the movies and here comes the manager just flashing the flashlight. Like, yeah. yo, stop. <laughs> why, you <think> that, <laughs> why you think the last hour is always so sticky? <laughs> <laughs> you walk around like, eh, oh, eh, oh, eh, oh. <laughs> your shoe comes off right. and step on the floor and shit. <laughs> exactly. Wait, what? So, so what? So the working in these places reminded you of acting is what it was? Well, you're yeah. watching movies. Yeah, I would watch movies for free and then like, I was like, just picturing myself on a big screen and stuff like that. <laughs> Every time I happen to drift away yeah. from acting, something brings me back. So like, for example, like I, I wasn't acting in high school because I wasn't accepted to the TV program. Right. I was studying, I, I was in the finance program. So then in my head, I'm like, that's the right thing to do because it's hard to tell Latino parents, I want to be an actor. Right. You know what I mean? So I went to school after graduating, I went to school for finance, accounting, because I was good at it. I got a job in an accounting firm and it sucked, but I was still playing baseball for Miami Dade. And then uh, MTV, was doing like auditions for like baseball fans and like they were doing the show call off the bat. And then my coach gave it to the whole team, but I was the only one that applied and they accepted me. And they flew me to New York. I was living in New York and I was on TV shows call off the bat, filming with friends and stuff. And then when I came back, I was like, you know what, this is what I want to do. So I came back, got my degree on communications and journalism. Okay. And I was just auditioning. I, didn't, I was an extra on some TV show and then Nothing was going nowhere, so I said, fuck it, I'm going to go back to finance. So I got a job at Wells Fargo and stuff okay. like that. And after a while, I was so unhappy that I ended up moving to Australia. I was like, I'm wasting my time. And then I was just doing it for the travel. But then I, while I was on public transportation, there was a theater and it said, looking for an actor with an American accent. So I auditioned, didn't get it. But then after that, they kept on hiring me for plays. And I was just doing plays for the whole two years. Wow, man. So you see what I'm saying? Every time I was getting out, something brought me back in. But where did, where did comedy come into all this, man? How did that fall so, in your So when my visa ended in Australia, I said, I, I want to I take acting seriously. 
So I knew that I needed to, to, to take classes. So what I did was when I got back, I started taking improv classes. And, okay. and then I signed up to Villain Theater. And that's where I met Mateo before. There, and it's, oh, an improv, sure. it's an improv theater over there. So you guys knew each other from Miami? Yeah, I mean, like, a little bit. We like, bump into each other. Yeah. Like, like I wasn't doing stand-up yet. He was doing stand-up, but he was doing stand-up at the theater that I'm doing improv. Okay. So, like, we'll help set up. And it's like, okay, it's open mic night. Mateo's yeah, not watching. And I'd hop into improv games and just yeah, fuck him up for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, <laughs> but I, 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 didn't, I didn't know him. Like, oh, Mateo's my friend. It's just yeah. like, but yeah, like Mateo, I know Mateo's a comedian in Miami. Yeah. yeah, but then, like, when I got here, I'm doing a show stand-up in Spanish, and then Caesar's there. And, yeah, here I don't know nobody. So, Caesar, de lo mío. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, you gravitated quick. Yeah. That, that's what Miami people do. We find another one from Miami. You don't need to know you that well, bro. You my friend already. Yeah. <laughs> like, but un un until you start getting into semantics, like you know, like oh, you're from Miami? No, I'm from I'm from Kendall. Like, you know. <laughs> uh, but so where did where did comedy then? So when you were doing improv, but how did it lead you to stand up comedy? Because so, improv is fucking skits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. But um, we used to play this game where. Uh, it's a two-person scene, and then someone in tech will play a music, like a dramatic song, like Hans Zimmer or like the Titanic song. Mm -hmm. And then whoever was talking right before that song came up has to stand up in the middle of the stage and just start saying a monologue. Okay. You know? And then, so I started getting comfortable with that, because uh, Villain Theater, they, they, they do a great job of bringing people in, and we always had great crowds. And then we saw that that was doing, our improv was doing so well, it's like, oh, what else can we do? incorporate into this theater so they started uh they wanted to test out a stand-up showcase whoever wanted to sign up sign up and then and, and it wasn't obviously it's hard to teach stand-up but it was more like just get on stage and talk and we'll give you our opinion so i i did that i signed up with my little brother actually and then um i just started writing literally stories because I'm, I'm not really good at creating jokes i'm really good at you're telling, a storyteller i'm really good at telling something that happened to me and then i'll yeah. add funny stuff to it mm -hmm. and then i did that and then we it was like a five week program and then you get five minutes as like your graduation okay and then i did that and i felt confident about it and then you know i i i, I had it i felt like i just had stand up you know as a little trick in my pocket just in case like you know and then yeah and then and then you just started doing that i did i started doing it i i did you know i hit up the same spots taurus red room red bar red bar red, yeah red bar um uh I don't even remember the rest, but then I I, I got fortunate and I did uh, the Miami Improv Theater. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with Oreo and them. Okay. So Shout out to Oreo. Man. Shout out Oreo. Yeah, he does a great job, but like Oreo, man, what the fuck am I saying? Oreo, Oreo, that's my dude. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. And then uh, my friend Christian, he he was hosting a a, a, a show for Kyle Grooms. Oh, shout who, out to he, Kyle, man. He's he, been on this show, too. Yeah, for real? Yeah, man. Kyle Grooms, he used to write for Chappelle, and he used to be on a Chappelle show. And then uh, he had me open up for him, and then I was like, man, this is pretty cool. Oh, with Julie Bias? Yeah. Yeah, her, too. Julie's uh, my... Yeah, yeah, that's, exactly. that, that's my auntie that I never picked. <laughs> she picked me. Yeah, <laughs> super sweet, super, Julie. super supportive when I was trying out there. And then whatever, so it was going pretty well, but then the pandemic hit. Yeah. So then, I, you know, no one's doing it. Like, I saw people trying to do, like, virtual shows and stuff like that. But, yeah. but you know, like, I always feel uncomfortable, like, just being on Zoom. Man, so you, 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 how long have you been doing the the, the, the comedy? You said, well, you said so uh, the, 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 around 2018, the, right? 2019? Yeah, the comedy, the stand-up, uh, I think I started 2019. Okay. Yeah, 2019. And you're still I, Latin. It was literally, like, maybe February 2019. And then the showcase was March something. And then April, I got the Miami Improv. And then in June, I'm opening for Kyle Groom. So I was like super excited. And then uh, I had a family member. My stepdad had a stroke um, ah. after, literally right after the Kyle Groom show. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So then, um, and he was, um, he was like, he was like the the bear, the food bread. The, you yeah, know, he was, he was for, the, the, the head from, of the house. The head of the house for my mom. And then, so I, I had to like start, you know, taking care of them and stuff like that. So I took, I took some time off. And then, the pandemic hit so it was like you know there's no the work my, my can. stepdad can't work and there's no work you know exactly. what i mean what's that balance for you like doing different art forms like yeah is the thinking process different form or the emotional no, it's definitely, it's definitely, i mean like i feel like stand-up is, is really hard for me just coming up with new material okay. because like i i can i feel like i have a a good solid 10 minute that i can use 
all the way till I die. You know what I mean? Right. But obviously, when you start bringing up, getting a fan base and stuff like that, you know, you want to give them new stuff. You want to branch out. And that's when I start getting out, like, out of my comfort zone, and I, you know, start doubting myself and stuff. But like, like I said, I moved here for acting, not for comedy. But um, Jeremy, Jeremy Brenner, a friend of ours, um, he he said that Keenan Thompson was having a showcase here. Yes. And then I just submitted myself like a, like a, a three minute video, and I was chosen. And I was like, I was like, oh shit, you know, I didn't come here for comedy, but I, there's an opportunity. Might as well just do it. So I did, I did like my four minute set that I, I've been that I've used in Miami and stuff like that, and it, it went really well. And and then from there, I've been doing open mics and getting booked for different shows. But the the goal was in comedy. It was stand up. But obviously, I have a good friend. Um, he always tells Josh. He, he tells me you got to use everything you got. Hey, you do, man. Any any, any any little talent you got, use it. Use Rock it. it. So Fuck now, like, people hit me up with scripts and be like, hey, Caesar, can you make this script funnier? Yeah. Hey, can you, can you help me make this character funny? You know, and it all, you know, it's, it's all because they've seen some comedy videos. So. I got a curious question here while you were saying that. Um, do you find there's a difference doing comedy here in Atlanta versus Miami? I hated doing comedy in Miami, man. Was it the lie. crowd? crowd the comedians like i remember uh, my friend joey albano man he moved to la shout out to joey you know joey yeah him and they are good people yeah joey is great man and he and he's he, he's like he would motivate me to like yeah let's go to open minds let's do all this and all that stuff and i would go with him but and we would go like to west palm and for lauderdale to try different rooms i don't remember the name of this app i just felt so out of place because like it's just like theater kids sometimes theater kids are kind of we oh no nah, West Palm that's a different and, and sometimes, vibe. Like, in my, I know how you said like you know how you said oh Miami people we always find a crowd but the thing is that that's the that's what I didn't like about Miami like it was too clicky oh big time and then here in big Atlanta time. in Atlanta I feel like there's more people that are willing to extend a hand you Atlanta's know I mean? a real open minded city yeah like that's, you know what I'm saying that's been a good thing overall. This is our sixth season of Congrats. the Everyman Podcast Show. You are our number one guest nice. of season six. Um, and we're doing something a little fun here. Uh, last year was season five. We did top five. It's season six in here, so we're going to have a top little fun six. with you. <laughs> yeah, no. We're actually going to do six things we need to know about Caesar. Oh, and I'm going to start with number Jeez. one. Uh, I wish I had my fucking. I was ready to list them out. So number one, just throw a hot. I got you. Whatever, whatever, whatever you think about. Go what's on. what's something you're looking forward to? Uh, my birthday's next month. Okay. Okay. How's the turn? Uh, damn. We got, we got, <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Bro. It's okay. I say, I'm he turning. Said, that's his twenty. You can see. Uh, I'm turning. He, he got more Dominican with that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm turning uh, 33. 33. 33. Man, hey, Jesus was 33, baby. Was he? When he died. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we laughing? <laughs> That's my start. Um, okay. Alleg Allegedly. Okay. Um, um, I, I, we'll, we'll bounce back and forth. Okay, well, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm good at this. Right. I like trivia and all that shit. We, we're going we're gonna to try to rapid fire. Uh, most embarrassing moment in your life. I have a few, but one that always thinks my, uh, comes to mind is when I was in third grade. I, I was bad, and I remember I was in Spanish class, and I asked the teacher, can I use the bathroom? But I guess I used to always lie about using the bathroom, so she said no, and I, I took a shit in my pants in class, and I remember I sat next to this girl I like Jackie. And, and I, remember, I remember Jackie saying, man, it smells really bad. And I, I'm, I'm telling you that, bro, the whole thing came out. It's not like I farted or sharted. I took a shit in my pants. And I remember I looked her dead in the eye and I said, yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> and, then, it and then it's crazy, man. At that time, my dad, I was living with my dad and he lived in Coral Gables in Lejeune. You remember that yeah, Ocean yeah, Bank, that the movie there. theater? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So I went to Kenlock Park Elementary and I had to walk home and I'm walking all the way home in the hot sun you know the Miami. office has plant yeah, has like shit up in my ass. you couldn't go to like before home you couldn't pause into the bathroom room. Nah, I needed to get out of that school quick <laughs> I, you see what I normally used to do I used to stay after school and go play basketball with my friend but I couldn't with shit in my pants so the, okay I get home I rush in I'm living with my mom my, my stepdad my stepmom and my dad just my stepdad and my mom. I mean, my dad and my stepmom. I'm sorry. So I rush in. My mom, my stepmom is in the kitchen. I rush in. I don't even say hi. I go straight to the bathroom. I take a shower. I clean my ass. Everything relieves, right? I'm eight years old. And then my stepmom calls me. And 
And she takes me to the bathroom, bro. There's shit all over the walls. It's <laughs> <laughs> not funny, bro. Bro, she beat the shit out of me. She literally whooped my ass. Oh, man. She's like, who do you think is going to clean this, blah, blah, blah. And so I took a shit in my pants. My 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 crush knew about it. I fucking have a rash. I'm I'm black and my ass is red now and I got an ass whooping for shitting my pants. It was literally the worst day of my life. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh my forget. god. Mateo, you next. Uh, what is it? What's what's one movie or one album that if someone were to listen to or watch, they would know you a little better? Well album man, like that speaks to me. I know my friends that know I like the the what is it? Um is the J. J. Cole's first album? Okay. Uh, second album with like the basketball and stuff. I forgot uh, what it was. Friday called. Night Lights. Yeah, that might be it. No, the next one after that. Okay. The one with uh, the um, um, in the morning and work out for me and stuff like that. And then obviously Aventura, uh, the Kings, uh, not the Kings of Bachata, but the one after that one with Su Veneno and Por Un Beso. Uh, Legendary. Segundo, I feel like yeah, yeah. everybody everybody knows that that's me right there. Um. The your favorite food. What is your favorite dish? Bro, I, I'm a I'm a tourist, and my people like to tell me that that's why I eat a lot. Sure. I don't believe that shit. Okay. But whatever, man. I love all types. I, I eat a lot of Italian food. I can eat pasta every day. I can eat tacos every day. I can eat Taco Bell every day. Don't judge me. Wow. Uh, that's you. I love uh, <laughs> my mom. My mom, she makes an amazing arroz, picadillo, y tostones, frijoles. Or whatever stuff like that, baleadas, because I'm also my mom's Honduran. I yeah, baleadas, baleadas every go day. crazy. Con carne y mantequilla. I don't like eggs in my shit. And then, yeah. So, was something classy about you and something trashy? Classy about me and trashy. Trashy. Damn, I don't know what would be trashy. You trashy, like Taco Bell? Trashy so. sometimes. Man, everybody yeah, loves Taco Bell. Everybody loves Taco Bell. <laughs> trashy is, um. I fuck with crystals. I don't know, man. I fart a lot. I fart a lot. I suck my thumb sometimes. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I play Yu-Gi-Oh competitively. I play Pokemon competitively. Uh, I don't know. Some people think that's trashy, um, but I, no, that's I'm cool. not. I'm not that trashy, honestly. <laughs> Class, classy. I don't know. I think like I'm. I'm. I. I go all out on dates or I plan stuff. I'm very artistic with certain things. Um, I don't know what classy would mean. I have OCD about a lot of things. I don't know if you guys do this. But let's say you you do laundry. Mm -hmm. That's not the clothes I'm gonna wear next. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I have to finish the cycle. E everything that's clean, I have to wear that next before okay. I wear. You go with that. So you're yeah. not putting the laundry back on top. You might put it. On I the might top. put it on the top, but I'm still pulling the bottom one. Okay. I go like you know like some people are like oh I love wearing the shirts my favorite shirt. I may not I might not be there yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I still have to wear even oh, if you, gotta get, you gotta get through I, this. I one. gotta look because I am definitely aquí viene Mateo wearing the same shit. No, I, I can't do that. I can't do. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you got the Cheech and Chong joint. I ain't seen yeah, that. Yeah, I haven't seen you with that on yet. That's a new one. You got. That's... You just bought that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favorite baseball? Your your number one favorite baseball player. Albert Pujols. Albert Pujols. Albert Pujols. My man is swollen, dog. I swear I that my man did steroids. Nah, disrespect. I used to love Sammy Sosa, and then I stopped becoming a fan uh, because he took steroids, and then he used cork, and then he turned white. And then, <laughs> like, oh. this guy's becoming my worst enemy. Three strikes. He went from what? my best friend to an enemy. He was. I, I still had his back till he turned white. He looked ridiculous. Uh, yeah, yeah, but Albert. Pujols, He's I'm out here looking like a fucking ghost. <laughs> And then, like, if, if I have to pick, like, a Marlins player, I used to love Mike Lowell, Derek Lee, and guys like that. Who was uh, your um, your game the most, like, you know, like, when you play baseball, what's, what's a player that your uh, game is kind of like? Man, I was, I'm, it's, I'd say I'm probably, like, Juan Pierre. Okay. He's, like, a fast guy. Shout out to Juan Pierre, man. Any, any home run I've ever hit in my life has been by luck. You know, or inside never, the park? Like, I feel like I'm strong, but for some reason, I can't hit a home run. Like, so, like, when I, I can't purposely do it. Like, it just, it happened. Word up. But Word. I only as fast as I could there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what's the goal here? Is it to move towards uh, both comedy and acting, or, or do you really want to lean more with acting? I mean, I, I try to now um, that the comedy scene is growing for me, like, I'm growing the comedy scene, I, I want to dedicate as much time as I can to both. Uh, ideally, you know, I would like to maybe, you know, book a TV show or something like that. Okay. Um, 
you know, like Adam Sandler and those guys, maybe my comedy can inspire a TV show and we can work from there. But yeah, like uh, acting is my passion. Where can people follow you on social media? Where can people reach out to you? You know, why don't you give the crowd here some information? Uh, so sure, my, my Instagram is Cesar Pichardo. I, 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 which is the third. Funny story, I'm not really the third, but I had to do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can add me there, and I post a lot of stuff there. And, yeah. Okay, and what movie would you like, wh where can people see you with with your act? What, what, what would you recommend? Oh, we, I have a movie coming out next month, El Reggaetonero. Uh, we did a screening in January. I actually still haven't seen it. Really? Uh, yeah, but we're doing a big block party type of thing in Miami uh -huh. for it. Uh, Caesar, my man, I've had a blast here with you. Thank you for helping us, you know, being our first guest here for season six, lady. We in Atlanta. All right, what area of Atlanta are you repping? A rapping? I mean, I'm a rap Buckhead, and I'm there. Buckhead? I'm staying in Buckhead. Yeah, Don't leave Buckhead. That place is beautiful. We might, but it's too expensive. God damn, bro. Just stay on the outskirts, bro, because that shit is too nice. Brookhaven. We live in Brookhaven. Brookhaven? Right okay. There. Yeah, yeah. That sounds about right for y'all. Um, again, my man, thank you so much for doing this. Mateo, you the man. Appreciate you being here. People, check this out. We getting started. I'm John Everyman, your host. Make sure you give us a like and follow. You see the box that pops up, Every Man Podcast Show. Give us a search on social media, on YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notifications when you see people like Caesar or anyone else we got out here in Atlanta because we still got plenty more to give you from out here. Um, again, shout out to our sponsors. Apps. All Property Solutions. If you guys have any real estate issues, man, you have any violations on your properties, <laughs> you're buying, you got insurance claims, hit them up. Follow them on social media, on their website, give them a call, mention this show, $50 discount. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm John Everyman again. It's the Everyman Podcast Show Season 6. We out here, bitches, in the ATL. Deuces, people! I have a girlfriend. We've been together for a while, and I think I love her, but it kind of sucks because the more I love her, the gayer I feel. I don't know if I... <laughs> man, do you guys get that? Like, she has me moisturizing. Yeah. I only pee sitting down now. <laughs> so, the other day, she's like, baby, come with me to Pilates. I was like, no, that's gay. She says, there'll be other men there. I said, okay, let's go. <laughs> like let's go uh, she's great I love my girlfriend but I know if we do break up um, all I have to do is you know block her on social media and I'll never see her again but it got me thinking like if we were in China and we were Chinese I'll never get over her I'll see her everywhere oh, come on it's just a joke I grew up with my mom, and um, my mom's a hoarder. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really common in the Latino community. They save everything, and they, they say no to, and they never say no, and their theory is that they're gonna send it back to their country because they're so poor or whatever, but she never does. So it stays in the house. And my mom is such a hoarder that she would pass down clothes that didn't fit her anymore to me, and say, <laughs> yeah. She said it's, they were unisex. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was the first metrosexual. <laughs> My mom doesn't throw anything away. I was the, I was the last thing she threw away. Aww. I was only 28. <laughs> yes. My friends were investing in crypto. I was still buying Pokemon cards at Target. <laughs> but yeah, so w like wearing the clothes didn't bother me, but then I started to get picked on at school. Like in middle school, uh, kids were picked on me because the, the back of my shirt had a slipper. Yeah. And I would get in a lot of fights, and I would lose every fight. And it's not, it's not what you think. It's not because I don't know how to fight. It's just that dress was too tight. <laughs> I want to ask you guys, have you guys seen The New Little Mermaid? Yeah. That's good, that's good. That was a big controversy, right? People were complaining that The, the New Little Mermaid is African American. And I didn't understand why, because she's, Haley Bailey's her name. She's beautiful, she can sing, she can swim. And, <laughs> And it was a big issue, and, and I know it's going to be another big issue when you guys find out that Snow White is Mexican. <laughs> I'm serious. She's always cooking. She's always cleaning. She lives with seven construction workers. <laughs> I'm serious. They all live together because no one could put the name on the lease. They all live in Norcross. <laughs> I'm serious.
this. I don't know where he got. One is saying they call him sleepy, but he's just hung over from drinking so many Coronas. Grump, Grumpy's mad because Sleepy drank his Coronas. They all got real names like Julio Pepe Paco. But every time they get pulled over, they're like, nah, he's just dopey. Everybody knows dopey mean don't speak English. Uh, it's been hot. It's been really hot lately, right? It's crazy, right? I know it's hot when white people are telling me, Caesar, I'm almost your skin color. <laughs> I'm like, nah. Thank you so much. My name is Caesar. Yeah, we. Better we... not bring your kids. <laughs>